Well, welcome uh, everyone. Um, Agala San, uh, Adam Long, AJP. Um, these are Ham with Law Just Long, AJP. Uh, Nancy uh, Elliott, uh, these are Ham, AJP. Um, Florida, hey, Addy Day, La Be, Abeha. Oklahoma, hey, Tulsa, hey, it's Ado Chine. I want to give a brief introduction in the Yuchi language. Um, I just said that uh, my name is Adam. Uh, my parents are Wafla Jess Long and Nancy Elliott. My dad is from uh, Sepulp, Oklahoma. My mom's from Toronto, Canada. Uh, I myself was born and raised in, in St. Pete, Florida, but now I'm living out in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, this year is the inaugural uh, Natives in Tech Conference, and uh, the goal here is to elevate uh, Native people that are in tech. Uh, the first speaker we have today is Noma Thayer, and we have many more speakers um, uh, throughout today, which you can find uh, on the conference schedule. Um, which you can find on the Natives in Tech website. Just go to nativesintech.org, go to conferences, scroll down to the uh, list of conferences, uh, should be 2019. And if you click on that, you'll have all the information you need for today's uh, agenda. Um, so yeah, I didn't wanna give too much of a, an opening. This is more about the speakers and the content and seeing what native people are doing out there in the software industry and uh, to hear uh, their about their experience and their knowledge and so i'm happy to now hand the mic over to noma who will present uh, on some on some of the uh, topics that she's been interested and in, worked uh, on over the past few years so thank you Go ahead, Noma. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah, looks good. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Zen Beach, you everyone, good morning. I am, uh, my name is Bata Anna Hahet. Uh, my English name is Noma Thayer. I'm going to be talking this morning about engineering for good. And for me, that is <coughs> working in tech for politics and nonprofits. The presentation shouldn't take a whole hour, so we'll definitely have time for questions at the end. So what I'm going to talk about is why get into working in tech for good. People, the kind of people we need in our field. How to get started in the field and examples of places to work. So I'm going to tell a short personal story about myself in organizing. We're taught to tell our personal stories in order to convey our motivations and relate to people that we're trying to organize uh, around a cause. I'm enrolled Eastern Shoshone and Northern Arapaho from the Wind River Reservation. I did not have the intention of working in politics. I found that, um, you know, I grew up on the reservation. I had always been disheartened um, by the state of politics or what the government had done to us. So I grew up, I would say, very angry about the situation. 
Um, fast forward to school, I was in college in Nevada, and that was the first time that Nevada had be, become an early state in the primary process. And so I thought I should do something about this. Got involved, started volunteering, then started organizing, then went to a short data training camp and um, after the data camp, decided to get into data. I was the Colorado data director in 2008 for Barack Obama in Colorado. And since then, I've been doing almost exclusively working in politics and nonprofits, um, a couple of startups, but I found that this work continues to be a way for me to positively affect the things that I was angry and frustrated about. So it's been really fulfilling. What do I care about? What do you care about? This is the um, most important question when you're thinking about working in politics. The big question is um, finding a way to work on something that you're passionate about. So whatever your cause, you can find a way to use technical skills to work in it or on it. You know, for me, I've worked for things like preventing gun violence, um, promoting the Affordable Care Act, of course, elections to elect Democrats. But anything that you care about that you're personally invested in, there are ways to work on that in the world. So ask yourself that as we go through this presentation, and I'll ask it again at the end. I like to frame this conversation by thinking about a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King that I think of often. He said, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? And I think that's why so many of us get into this work and continue to do this work because our work is urgent and the question is persistent, whether we're working in politics or working in some other way to further our people. It is a great time to get into tech for politics and nonprofits for a few reasons. Um, one, you can directly affect change. And that's not you as a whole, the industry. Um, that's you as an individual. You can do something about the things that need to change. The thing, whether it's someone just won an election on Tuesday for collected, collective garbage pickup in their town, uh, all the way up to the presidential race next year. So... Any issue, anything that that you work on, you can actually affect the way that that's going to go. Um, now, more than any time in our past, there are so many opportunities for people who are interested in tech and interested in data to get into the field. I would say there's more jobs than candidates at this time, and it's only going to keep growing as we get more sophisticated. To that point, uh, you would be on the very front line of innovation. There's been a lot of news stories about politics um, and all the technical things each party is doing to step up their game in terms of data and tools, um, but it's a field that's constantly innovating. There are so many things that we haven't tried or implemented. So especially if you're in a smaller organization like a state organization, you have a lot of flexibility to be able to work on things that are new and introduce technology. And then the last one I would just say is job satisfaction. I have worked in politics and then gone to 
startups or corporate organizations and just found myself coming back every time because there's such a, it's a whole different level of job satisfaction than I would, what I would call a normal job. Um, because you are affecting change every day and the people who work in the field are so great. So let's talk about the people we need in politics. And these are all of the kinds of positions of what jobs are out there right now. And if you have a technical background, um, you are already, you know, a leg up compared to where most of us came from. So this is the big one um, for me anyway. This is what I do. I'm a data analyst, and so campaigns and political organizations have data coming in from so many different sources, often millions and millions of records. So the field, we need data analysts to take all of those pieces, combine them together, be able to do analysis on them so that we understand the clear picture of what's going on for, say, in a campaign. Uh, field data, that is, field is what we call organizing on a campaign. So that's taking the data from all the volunteers and your staff who are knocking on doors and calling people and putting that together to say, how are we doing with this candidate or this issue? Uh, how many people have we talked to? How many people do we have to talk to? How is the race going? So that's field data. It's one of the most important things you can work on. Fundraising, of course, every campaign or organization, whether it's a nonprofit or a political organization, has to focus on fundraising. So there's a lot of data and interesting ways to look at that. Ads. The campaigns and organizations in space are serving ads on Facebook, they're serving ads on Twitter, well, not anymore. <laughs> um, they're serving ads on Google. So it's how do you target those audiences? How do you determine uh, how well your ads did? And then digital and email, think of a campaign, so you're probably might be watching the presidential race right now, all of the primary candidates sending you emails, um, their ads might come up at social media, and just the general engagement around what's happening online. Since that is a primary way to reach people now instead of calling them, uh, that analysis is really important. We need engineers. So these are your, what you would think of as traditional engineers. Um, these are going to be front end web developers, database developers, full stack engineers. Often organizations are smaller, so they might have one engineer or two instead of a whole team of 50. Designers is a huge need. Um, because we've been, we've fortunately become a lot more focused on user experience and app developers. A lot of the new technologies that have come out in the past few years have been organizing apps on your phone. Digital. So this is, again, only becoming more and more and more important. So if you are interested in this field at all, um, this is a great place to get into the work. Campaigns and organizations need social media strategists. They need the social media managers. They need content managers, so people who produce video, who are photographers. Uh, they need creative directors. Some of these overlap, so sometimes you might have your content manager who is your creative director. Uh, definitely need writers. So such email is such a huge part of a campaign's program. Uh, they employ, you know, several writers on a big campaign. Uh, 
to ensure that we're testing for the best messages to go out to, to people. Um, copywriting and graphic design. Other roles you could think of in politics, especially, are security. This is also one of the biggest needs um, for the entire industry. IT, which is networking and hardware campaigns. Let's say it's a statewide campaign. You're going to have one central office and then many more satellite offices. And so not only does the infrastructure need to be in the main office, but then you have to figure out how to distribute that. We need database managers. <clears throat> so there are, you know, on in one organization, there may be five different databases. So we need people to know how to administrate those, but also um, put that data all together. Data scientists. This is a newer uh, position that has been incorporated into the field for most organizations, which is great. So these are the people who run models and experiments and um, programs like R or SPSS or even Python um, so that we can run statistical analysis on all of our data. We do need CRM experts. So if someone was really experienced in Salesforce, for example, uh, there are many, many CRMs, as you know, and there are so many organizations and they all use different tools. So we need people who are experts in many of them. And then research. There, there's a technical research kind of role and candidate research kind of role. Um, but research is definitely a good place to start as well. This is a really important slide. So the number one requirement for getting into politics is the ability to learn. And when I say that, I mean everyone started somewhere, including me. Almost every single person that I know in the tech and data field in politics started as an organizer. So I started by knocking on doors and making phone calls I had no idea how to run complex analyses on cloud databases, but I learned. And I am a huge believer, I'm adamant that everyone can learn technology. The harder part to learn is the people part. And if you're great at that, you can learn the technology. Um, this is also important because every single organization that I've ever seen or been in has different technologies. And so they do things sometimes completely different. We share tools, like the larger tools that we use, but everyone counts numbers differently. Everyone reports numbers differently. So you're going to have to learn everything top to bottom, any new place that you go. How do I start? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about getting into technology for politics. And I will say I focus mostly on politics because that seems like an easier, um, easier subject or a specific subject to talk about, but this also applies to things like nonprofits. So some avenues to entry. The most important one, number one, is work on a campaign. Um, I think it's very difficult sometimes to understand the data that is coming out of a campaign. This could be an issue campaign. It could be a candidate campaign if you haven't worked on a campaign. So when you work, when you start working on a campaign, um, even if you're in the headquarters office working on SQL queries, they will ask you to 
go out into the field and knock on some doors. But it's really critical experience because when you're knocking on doors, you're talking to people, entering their data into the database, and then you can see how that data looks like on the back end. So campaign work, whether you're, you start as an organizer, whether you start in social media, uh, whether you start as an intern, this is the best way to start working in this field. Uh, two, there's a lot of now campaign data training avenues that you can take advantage of. Um, if people want to get in touch with me later, I'm happy to tell them about where are some places they could look. But those places take applicants, um, especially diverse applicants, and put them through a week-long campaign simulation. And so not only are you learning the hard skills of here's how to code in SQL, here's what our kind of databases look like, make reports, but then they will guide you along in, okay, this is an example campaign. How do you work in this space doing data? Those are really helpful. That's sort of how I got into this. Um, and the training has also evolved a lot in the space, so there are some great programs out there. Uh, number three, traditional degree. I think I said that if you work in technology or have a computer science degree, now you are already a leg up on people like me who never went to school for that. So you have the background of knowing how to code, understanding technical concepts, hopefully being able to explain that to other people, and building things. So if you've only gone to school, um, I wouldn't say only. Getting a CS degree is is a great way to get your foot in the door. And then probably I would advise go work on a campaign. And then networks. This is so critical in politics and nonprofits. But <clears throat> the business is not as large as, say, private tech. Even not as large as probably all of Amazon's offices. So find people that you know who might be working in the space or around the space. Talk to them about what they might work on. These are also people um, you can ask for job postings from. You can talk to them about what the best way to get into things is. Um, so do use your networks as much as possible. Where can I work? So this is a list. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is a list that I came up with of types of organizations you can work at. Um, it is not comprehensive. These are just some examples, but to kind of give you an idea of what is out there. Political is first. Uh, as I mentioned, campaigns. I would recommend that every single person work on a campaign. Even if you only do it once, it will change your life, whether you win or lose. Um, you can work for one of the parties. And so examples here are the DNC, uh, the Democratic National Committee, that's in D.C., overseeing, that's the National Party for the Democrats. Uh, the Republican National Party is also in D.C. That's their national party. Uh, as a progressive Democrat, I cannot endorse working there. But, uh, state parties, these are really critical for the, for the political, not only the national party in general, but the way that politics works. Each state party is different. And they're really, as you would imagine, focus only on their state. So a lot of the work happens at state parties. 
we have a lot of vendors uh, in the space, and I gave a few examples. So we have, for example, data vendors. So that's where people get lists of voters, say, or um, models on who to talk to. One's Target Smart. There are many more. Uh, we have CRM vendors. And so those are the people that are exposing the data to you so that you can use it. Our big one is NGP Van. Um, and as I mentioned, there's a lot of organizing apps that you can use. So Reach is one. Uh, if you've ever heard of Hustle, there's apps for canvassing, texting, uh, community organizing. There's a lot of different apps you can work companies that you can work for. Uh, I include service organizations in this, in the political and nonprofit space. So for these couple of them are organizations that aren't doing the actual work on the ground. So they're not making the phone calls. They're not analyzing the on the ground data, but they are helping other organizations to do that. So the Analyst Institute, they run statistical experiments for organizations in the entire space. And when I say space, I guess I should say that every, every one of these organizations is separated by, by party. So I should specify for the Democratic Party and other progressive organizations like nonprofits who are working on these uh, same issues. The movement cooperative, same thing. They're uh, a group of, or like an umbrella group to help other organizations use data and tech. So other options in the political category, um, you could work for a polling firm or opinion research. Um, a lot of obviously polls go on constantly and there's a lot of very specific methodology, research, analysis that goes into them. Unions. Unions are a great place to, <clears throat> excuse me, unions are a great place to work. Um, and especially national, regional and national headquarters have very sophisticated data operations. You could work at a political action committee which is uh, the way that a lot of messages get out in politics. Consultancy firms, there are many firms, large and small, that are dedicated to political uh, clients for their analytics, their mail, their ads, their strategy. Nonprofits, so there are also, there are so many nonprofits and advocacy organizations out there. Um, again, coming back to the point, whatever your cause, you can find a way to use your technical skills to work on it. So, <clears throat> and the next point I have is Google it. So let's say that you wanted to work on gun violence and preventing that. Every town for gun safety. Um, there's local organizations. If you wanted to work on community hunger, 